beautiful, lovely to see you. And it was mercy moisty ten minutes ago when I came inside and decided to play with rocks and be with you in here. But um, I decided to stay because I just feel like sitting down today. So let me not waste any time. Damn it, I meant to wet this. So I'm going to just do this um, a little bit because this is a New Zealand rock, right? And it looks very ordinary. There's nothing particularly exciting about it. But I picked this up from a stream somewhere and I'm pretty sure that this is just a little bit of New Zealand greenstone. It's kind of plastered on the top of this ordinary piece of whatever it is. Which looks a bit like grey wacky, but I don't know. Um, but it's got some of this lovely green stuff, you know, just a little bit worked into it. And oh, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little vein of it there. And uh, when I was younger, I used to like finding coloured rocks and rivers. And this really looks like greenstone. I don't even think I knew it looked like Punamu at the time. Punamu is the Māori word for New Zealand and nephrite jade. Um, but I liked it. So I picked it up and brought it home. And it was sitting on the shelf right next to this one. So I decided to show you them both. And this is, I got the little label, Chalco Trichite. Or Chalco Trichite, I don't know which way you say it. It's from the Red Bank Mines in Northern Territories, Australia. And it is a variety um, of cuprite, right? So this is a copper thing. Not too surprising. You can see all the browns and reds. And there's a little bit of malachite there just to brighten it up. It's a wonderful piece of something. And there it is. So I'm just enjoying this. And I'm sure a lot of you will see this on replay because, of course, it's Tuesday morning for me. And I took Easter um, Monday off, which is a, something I haven't ever done in three years and um, I just did and it was very good for me and of course for a lot of you it's Easter Monday so um, if I don't see you live that's why you're with your families but I've got to get started again sometime so here is this beautiful yeah it's even sparkly thing um, and there's the back which is just the beautiful brown of the earth oh and it's quite fragile little little bits are falling off it so I've got to be careful um, so it's sparkly and dark red and beautiful, and there it is. Last but not least, uh, I've got to put that down carefully. I have a little piece of um, red, well, orange calcite, and it's beautifully banded. Look at that. There it is. And so I'm just enjoying this. And I love how the light comes through it, and that's our, those are our rocks for the day. So there they are. Um, and I've got to dust off my fingers. So today I want to talk about um, a comment that one of you made about, uh, because we were talking about self-worth last week. And, um, or rather, we were talking about, you know what, I can't remember what we were talking about last week, but one of you made a comment about um, valuing yourself and understanding and, and loving that you, you value yourself and you know that. G'day, beautiful. I can see someone's on. It's lovely to see you. It's Jen. Yay. Um, and, you know, I know that I love and value myself, but the people closest to me don't. And what's the deal with that? And, you know, and that's what I'm, that, that, and when we had this little conversation in the comments, and you can find it if you want to go find it. Um, and I thought, well, you know, self-worth is, is always, the, the words self-worth, by the way, I think are an oxymoron. But anyway. Uh, a thing that doesn't make sense. Um, that's what an oxymoron is. It's like, oh, I don't know, the living dead, you know, never mind zombies. But it's an oxymoron. It's a thing that doesn't, doesn't two words that go together and don't make sense. And the reason why self-worth as a thing doesn't make sense is because um, the idea that I need to work on my self-worth is kind of, no, I don't. I just need to know who I am. And when I know who I am, really, when I really know who I am, I have no problem recognizing my value and, and that I'm worthy. Um, and saying that, it's taken me however long, months, which I think I started at the beginning of this year, really diving into how does it feel when I feel really worthy? Because, you know, fundamentally, 
that's what we all want to feel because when you feel worthy, you can let the things into your life that you desire. Good day, beautiful people. It's lovely to see you. Um, so, you know, for me, self-worth is a bit of a thing because people are saying I have to work on it. And I don't believe that you do have to work on it. I think you have to practice feeling what's already there. You have to practice feeling worthy. And I've been doing that and I'm getting better at it because who knew it's a skill. Um, so that aside, I think when we start paying attention to who we are fundamentally in ourselves, we get to appreciate ourselves. There's nothing else. You get to appreciate the good choices you've made. The fact that you've overcome some shit that's happened in your life, whatever. You can make a choice and start to appreciate who you are. Um, and I realise as I say that, that for some people that can be extremely, a very deep choice to make. Because for whatever reason, you have great difficulty doing that, okay? Um, so that is not actually the topic that I want to talk about today. Um but I did want to say that you can't find real self-worth or real self-respect anywhere except inside yourself. It is not possible to get it from anybody else. Just can't be done. Um, and we all seek affirmation and validation from other people. And I totally get that. Um, and I also, you know, we are social beings and we thrive on community and connectedness and feeling supported and feeling loved and all of that. And I totally own that. And it's wonderful that I have that in place in my life. G'day, lovelies. I can still see you jumping on. It's really lovely to have you share your Easter Monday or Tuesday with me, depending on your time zone. Um, so... The people outside of us are always in some way reflecting something inside of us, which is not to say that if you have crappy people around you, it means you're crap, okay? Sandy, hello! Great to see you! But fundamentally, if I love and respect myself, sooner or later, and there can be a gap in there, the people around me are going to love and respect me too. And the gap is... That if you have people around you that don't love and respect you, don't treat you appropriately, then somehow you're allowing that to happen. Because, you know, if you knew that they weren't good for you, you would at the very least be aware of that and be at least intending something's got to change. You may not immediately be able to leave. You may be in a very difficult situation and you don't have the resources to change it, okay? But you at least will be aware of it and you'll be starting to think, well, how can I leave? What, you know, and just the, the, the thing of being aware that you're surrounded by people who aren't good for you and going from saying, well, this just is just my life and this is how it is with me and people are always nasty to me and that whole thing. Just the thing of going from that place to actually, no, this is not what I want, or what I deserve, or, you know, all of that stuff, that is the first step. Because until you actually allow yourself to acknowledge a different possibility in life, nothing's going to happen. Because you're just, you know, still thinking, well, this is how it is. And if this is how it is, you're not going to make any attempt to create change. And you're also not going to be open to change. You may really, really want it. But until you, something in you says, Something has to change and I don't know how, but I'm going to start being curious and, and, you know, nothing's going to change until something in you says, this is not normal, this is not how it should be, and something in me wants something different. And what happens is that when you start that process of saying, well, gee, there must be something better for me. That really is the first step of actually loving yourself enough to, to not settle. And so you start this gradual process of learning how to say no and say what you do want and love yourself and respect yourself in that way. 
And that can be very challenging if all your programs and all the loud voices in your head are saying, no, you don't deserve to be loved and you don't deserve to be treated kindly and you know, all of that stuff, right? The process of moving through all of your own conditioning and your own beliefs and your own habits, oh my God, unconscious habits about who you're used to being and how people are with you and what you expect and all of that, that requires you to love and respect yourself enough to overcome that stuff and all the pain and the bad feelings that go with it. Julian, it's you, hello! And when you do that, even in the smallest degree, because it does not happen overnight, speaking from my own experience, it doesn't happen overnight, it does happen. There was an ad that used to play, you know, it won't happen overnight, but it will happen. When I, in the 70s, when I was a younger person. Um, Every time you overcome yourself, even a little bit, and think, no, hang on, that's not right, no. Or, no, I don't want to think that way anymore. Or, no, that person said that thing that they've said to me a hundred times for the last ten years. And, no! And you start to imagine and speculate and create new possibilities. Every time you start to inhabit one of those, in even the smallest way, or you notice something different, or you create a change in your thinking, or you actually shift how you feel, oh my goodness, then you start to really love and respect yourself. Because you overcame something that used to blow you around like a strong wind. Before, that person would say that thing, and you would feel that way, and you would feel, feel buried by it for however long, and that was just how it was. And if you change that very predictable and painful and unpleasant outcome that you don't want into something else, you bet your bottom dollar and the top one and the middle one and all the ones beside it, you are going to feel good because you overcame yourself. And the more you do that, the more you start to really, really love and respect yourself. And you cannot lose that. Nobody can take that away from you. And more than that, when you've overcome yourself once, you think, hang on a minute, how did I do that last time? And you remember it and you overcome yourself again. And so it grows and it builds and you develop this sense of resilience and respect and trust even of yourself because you know you can handle this crap when it hits you. It may not be messy, it may not be pretty, it may not be pretty, it may be messy, it may be difficult, but there is something inside you that's getting stronger and you start to really love and respect that. So that to me is self-worth and self-respect that is entirely up to you to create and you can. We need tools, we need support. But people have done it with minimal tools and minimal support because they really, really wanted it. So, you know, I know we all have our own mountains to climb. What I'm saying is that no one can climb them except you. And you can have a team cheering you at the bottom, but at the end of the day, when it's you on the rock face, facing yourself, you have to do that. Um, so, that's how, to me, that is how I get self-respect and self-love is to overcome myself, to overcome my fears, my challenges, my traumas, my pain, whatever, and actually transmute that lead into gold. Um, and I've been doing it recently. I've got to remember to talk about the other piece I want to talk about, but I'll, I'll take a quick sideline. Um, really, truly, I have been practicing in the last few weeks, and I get to do walking meditations now, which is just amazing, because it's a whole step up to actually practice embodying the energy of who I want to be which is a whole lot of amazing stuff but in my awareness it is encapsulated the symbol I use for this is a picture of me leaping in the air punching the air in victory and I do that when I'm walking down the beach you know I, I leap I bound I, I it's like I don't care I don't do it in people's faces I make sure there aren't people anywhere close but I do because I, I need my body to feel what this is like to overcome myself that much. I need my body to feel that. Um, and yesterday morning, long story short, I was walking up the hill after I'd done my meditation and my body was kind of heavy because I'd gone deep places and the energy had moved. My body was heavy. I was feeling tired. And I, was, and I remember exactly where I was because this is one of those moments that you remember. And I thought, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I... 
what was that feeling that I had when I was on the beach and my body was just full of energy? And I brought it back to mine and it was like a switch. And my body was alive and had energy again. I thought, oh my God, I can, I, I can do this in real time now. I can change from weary, woozy, tired, heavy to alive. I can actually do that now. I can't tell you how good that feels. And I was just thinking, you know, on my walk today, you know, it's taken me two years doing this work that I do of Dr. Joe Dispenza's meditations to get to that point. And when I compare those two years and what I've gained in those two years and myself and everything else to the 52 years before them, totally, totally, totally worth it. I'm so delighted and, and, and proud of myself for doing this. So that to me is, is self-worth and self-respect. It's like, yes, I did that. And, and I can keep doing it. I spent the whole of yesterday doing it. And I'll spend as much as I can today and every day from now on practicing that because I want that signal to go to my cells. Because my cells can be heavy and woozy and tired or they can be alive and healthy and, and healed and abundant and everything else. I get to choose now. I have the switch. So... That to me is self-love and self-respect. Now, as for the people around us who don't value us, bearing in mind that not everybody has the choice to, choice to just walk the hell away straight away. You, you will create that choice if you want it. But whatever, where you are, whatever the circumstances. I thought about this and I, and I actually wrote something else on Friday because I was tired and, you know, and I thought, oh, whatever. But I changed it because I thought the way that I have observed people change relationships like that, and, and for myself too, two things. You actually have to let go of wanting people, even those who are close to you, to love you, respect you, give you what you desire. you got to let go. Um, and that's tough because of all the ideas and the program that we have in our heads about what our family should do and what that person should be and how they should behave you gotta let go of that you do and it's a big 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 choice to just let go and remove every expectation that you have of that person and all the but they should be like this screams in your head and you gotta, you gotta overcome that you got to let go of that and you have to actually allow them to be whatever the heck they choose to be because guess what? You can't change them. You can coerce them, but that isn't going to give you what you want anyway. So you got to let go. you got to love them. you got to love yourself enough to let go. Drop the expectation. And the way, and I've observed this, I did this, you know, it's a better... Yeah, a year ago now that I, I, I finally faced up to my own pain and started doing Go Love 20 and I did it with people that I felt safe with and eventually I did it with my mother um, who through no fault of her own, God, she did the best she could, but there was a lot of pain and most of it was mine and most of it probably didn't even happen, but it was me, it was what I was holding in that relationship. And long story short, I, I just had to send her love. And I suppose in that process I did set her free. Um, I did. I did. I had to let go of all my grief and my loss, which was again I think entirely manufactured in my own mind because of my responses to my my experiences. Now many people, it's not. Many people have just experienced really really hard stuff. Okay, so don't think I'm putting you in, in the same pot as me. This is my experience. I had to let go. I had to set her free to be however the hell she was gonna be. Um. And what happened was, and this was really diametric, it was really fast. The day that I did that particular process, and you know, a lot of tears, a lot of, you know, stuff. The next time I spoke to her, she'd actually had a really powerful emotional experience herself at the same time. It was potent, because it changed quantumly, because we're all entangled quantumly. We're energetically, emotionally, quantumly entangled with people. Energetic emotion, quantum entanglement, all the same thing, okay? Three words, same thing. So when you change the energy that you have in the relationship between you and the person, that relationship changes. So your expectation of wanting that, whatever it is from that person, is actually keeping, it's like a push-pull. 
and they feel that expectation and they say, no, I'm not giving it to you. And that's a relationship. And until you change it, nothing's going to change. So to actually let them go with love, not just, oh, piss off, I give up on you. I don't care. You know, the, the things we do to try and dampen our own pain. To actually love them enough to lovingly release them to be however the heck they want to be lovingly change the relationship in the energy lovingly love yourself deal with your own pain that you're trying to get them to assuage and fix and make you feel good lovingly let it go let them go do the work in the energy and if you don't know how to do it there is a big little meditation that Joe Dispenza put out called Go Love 20. Look it up on YouTube. It takes 15 minutes. The day that I did this with my mother, I actually did it five times over because I just knew that I wasn't done. Um, and I mean, I've done it many times since because it's so powerful. It's so appropriate. And if you listen to it, you think, ah, get over yourself and just keep doing it until your mind gets used to it, maps the process, gets used to the sound of Joe's voice and the music and what it is. Just get to know it, get familiar with it and get into it. And you will change the energetic bonding between you and that person or those people. And you will call your energy back to you and you will love yourself as you send love to them and the relationship will change and if it hasn't changed it's because you haven't changed and what happened and that's true and then when you finally get free and you let them go they'll either change and come closer to you or they'll change and go away you won't have to do a thing but you'll love yourself more and you'll set yourself free Yeah, and, and it, yeah, it's kind of irrelevant, eh, Sandy, because you drive yourself crazy thinking, what the hell did I do? Who the hell knows? It doesn't matter. Just change the energy. Change yourself. Call your energy back to you. Send her love. And um, yeah, go love. G-O-L-O-V-2-0. Go love 20. This was Joe's answer to, to COVID-19 was to release a love pandemic. And he reached at least a half a million people with that, probably more by now. It's an amazing little thing. But like I say, if you if you are surprised by how it sounds, and then there's a little introductory um, video that he's like two minutes to explain it. Listen to that first. Um, and if you're surprised by how it sounds, just get over yourself. Keep doing it. Um, because the more you practice it, the better you'll get at it. All right, beautiful beings, I'm out of time. Thank you so much for sharing your Easter Monday with me. I wasn't sure if anybody would be on, but it's lovely to have you with me. It's a blessing. Thank you. I will see you tomorrow. But before that, it's Tuesday. I've got to remember, I'm going to be live again in three and a half hours to give you an update on Sang Marie and what he's doing in the Gambia. He's having a little break over Easter, so I can share that with you, but he's been working very hard, doing very good work. So until then, much love. Bye-bye.